time to get caught up on some of the book re books that I've read for the Sword and Laser Book Club over the past few months, and might as well get to it with something a little chill. And by chill, I mean either served iced or hot with steamed milk, because I'm reviewing Legends and Lattes. There is a concept in fandom of the coffee shop AU. Um, the idea where you have a character from a character or characters from a franchise or franchises that can sit down in a coffee shop and hang out without drama. Um, in the Star Trek fan um, AU, not AU, but the Star Trek Expanded Universe, the framing narrative for the Captain's Tale uh, anthology is, is a similar concept. That, that one's a bar, but in otherwise, it is a place where characters can just hang out and have a refreshing beverage, alcoholic or non-alcoholic, or caffeinated, in the case of specifically the coffee shop at you, um, all without any drama or save-the-world stakes or anything like that. Legends and Lattes takes that concept and applies it to... Not as an AU necessarily, but the, but takes that idea and fits it into the framework of a heroic fantasy, or per, particular kind of a dungeon fantasy world, similar to that of the Forgotten Realms, other Dungeons and Dragons campaign settings. In this case, the novel follows adventurer Viv, who decided to get out of the adventuring game and is going to try her hand at open coffee shop, um, as she had a chance to try coffee at a gnomish city a while back, and she enjoyed it, and she's, you know, what, I'm gonna... This is something that I'd like to have as my retirement plan. Um, with the focus of the story then being on the difficulties of opening a coffee shop that doesn't exactly, in a place that doesn't exactly know what coffee is and why they want it and why it's a good thing. Now, I admit, I have not, unfortunately, never really been in a position take advantage of quote unquote coffee shop culture. Um, I either haven't had a coffee shop near me or when I did, it's been in situations where I haven't been able to sit down and hang out. I have either haven't had a job that allowed for that in terms of time availability because I'm not working from home or um, I, when I did have the time, I was, that was because I was unemployed. I didn't have the money to go, you know, sit in a coffee shop for several hours and drink coffee and work on blog posts and that sort of thing. Um, and then when I did have an extended time working from home, that or a job that was working from home, it was also one, help desk work, so I'm on the phone all the time, and two, it was also during COVID, so there weren't any coffee shops open anymore. So the whole idea of Viv more or less building coffee shop culture out of whole cloth as executed here is really interesting. And indeed, the tagline of the, no the novel, that it is of high fantasy and low stakes, is very much apt. Uh, it's the novel equivalent of an Ayashi K anime series, or a, a healing novel, so to speak. There is stress, there is tension, there's failure and recovery from, the, from that failure, but the stakes are low, and... Because of this, the stress intention is more personal. This is kind of where the almost comes in for the Ayashiki. Um, This isn't exactly the chill vibes of something like a restaurant to another world, where you have a narrative environment where the character is comes into the situation with a particular difficulty that they're facing in their everyday life, and the proprietor of the dining establishment has just the thing that will get them through what they need. Well, again, whether this is um, tonkatsu in Restaurant of the World, or this is any variety of cocktails in Bartender. It feels odd almost to vote the series for this. I say almost. Um, I don't know if this is a case where the English language publishing market, outside of the portions that work with localization of Japanese work, outside of EN Press or J Novel Club, or that sort of thing, where they wouldn't accept something like Legends or Lattes without some sort of moderately significant drama. Even again, if it's relatively low stakes genre compared to the majority of the other works published in this genre. 
it almost feels like if this got an adaptation to animation or a to manga form, the parts of the story that are more melodramatic and suspenseful and in the sense of potentially having this haven that Viv is trying to create for herself um, taken away, that those portions would be toned down and let the healing part of the parts of a person choosing a life away from violence and where she can make her own safe place have that encompass more of the work. Otherwise, like it works for me. The only bits that make me scratch my head there's a, are a few points in the development of the coffee shop within the story. Um, explicitly, this is a minor spoiler, but the coffee shop starts out not serving food. Um, and not no, no, none of the baked goods or pastries that you would expect, you know, in our world when you go to a coffee shop. And Viv doesn't understand why it'd be a good idea. When the thing is, it's also established by this point that she's got an idea to start the shop after going to a gnomish coffee shop in her travels. Only later in the story does she find someone to handle the baking, and after sales, and that's after sales of coffee alone demonstrate that it's unable to support the cafe then she has an oven installed and one of the friends she's made building the cafe becomes the baker and again this makes me scratch my head because i have never ever been in a coffee shop of any kind or size that it didn't have some variety form of baked goods or a place for them if they were sold out even if they didn't bake them in-house and they had them source them from somewhere else they had something and this is more of an issue because while coffee shops, again, in the universe are, while well, they aren't widespread, they exist. Viv went to one first and got the idea for this place. One of the comments that was made in the Sword and Laser Discord, we were talking about this, was that this comment made in jest was that Viv was making her way through the coffee shop tech tree. And that's what this feels like. This, this feels like if this were um a lit rpg or uh, something else like the japanese fantasy set um setting complete with a um fantasy rpg inspired setting complete with characters able to pull up their own stat screens um like you would have had Vic, it, viv pull up the tech tree and looking at this with like the little dotted lines it's like some of them are clear and other ones are um that have like are like nebulous and with question marks and like a little bar that says uh research points attained that sort of, like that's what it feels like there uh i did i did enjoy the book i do love the chill vibe of it but i wish it were a situation where i wish the novel could commit that it commit to be like this is a a healing novel. This is a Yashi K story. It is the narrative equivalent of a cup of a warm blanket and a cup of coffee to, um, and a book to read. So I, I wish we had that. I wish it was was went all the way to that. Now the author is doing a sequel or a prequel or something, um, and I'm interested to see how that one goes in terms of is that one like okay, his first book's come out, it's sold well, he can now do something more chill. We'll see. Um, the book is available through wherever, uh, you know, books are sold. Um, I have, will have links in the doobly-doo to where you can get it from Amazon and Alibris um, for physical copies and um, likewise from Co from Amazon and Kobo. And getting, anyone, getting anything through there helps support the site. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. <laughs>